Where's this punch going, man? I got a farmer over in the Cade County. He'll pay top dollar and no question that. Good thing old Pickett didn't think to mark his hogs, ain't he? I don't give a damn if he marks them, tags them, or tattoos them on a butt. As long as he keeps raising them, I'll keep stealing them. seen you since the election. Congratulations. Now, where's the badge? Well, at least you're not showing off. You know, I hear the board of aldermen refused to buy you a gun. Is that a fact? Well, they're supplying my ammunition. They give me a light and radio for my car, $35 a month for gas, and a monthly $200 salary. I had to buy my own gun. <laughs> well, I don't see it showing either. Well, it's in the glove box of my car. I hope that's the closest I ever have to get to it. Yeah, you've got nothing to worry about, Marshal Harris. I bet the last time a lawman fired a gun in this town was about uh, 1880, and he thought he had Jesse James court. Boy, don't miss dear Dora today, Dean. There's a couple of doozies in here today. Listen to this. I heard they make them up. And letters? No one real writes them letters. No, I've seen her once on TV. She said they're real letters. Listen to this. Dear Dora... I am a married mother of six children, aged 47. My husband, aged 52, has recently expressed a desire to... Emma and Dorothy, you better get moving. You're going to miss the bus. Wouldn't that be a shame? Now, here it comes. Did you move your butts? My husband, aged 52, has recently expressed a desire you still to... still making breakfast, Savannah? Well, look at who's here. I thought you were too sick to get out of bed and go to school. I'm feeling better. After the bus is gone. Would you do me a favor, Darlene? Would you drop dead? Only if you promise me a real nice funeral. Listen, Adina. Darlene, how come you don't call mama mama? So, can I have some breakfast, Adina? 
If you ain't too sick to stay in bed, you ain't too sick to make your own breakfast. Thanks a lot, Adina. My husband, age 52, has recently expressed a desire... How come you don't come, Mama Mama? Paulette, would you wait a minute? I'm trying to read something here. But how come, darling? How come what? Don't you holler at her. She's only four years old. Because she's not our mama, Paulette. Who's not? Oh, for crying out loud. Mama! Oh, come here. Now. I'm your mama. And I'm Claude's mama. And I'm Tommy's mama. But Darlene and Sin and Emmy and Dorothy all have a different mama. Do they have a different daddy? Not as far as we know. <laughs> no. Y'all got the same daddy. Go see if he's up. If he ain't, get him up. See if he wants some breakfast. My husband, age 52, has recently expressed a desire to... Whose husband? That was a different wife I had back then. Her name was Barbara. And she's their mama. Where is she? She, she run off. What's a wife? <laughs> a wife... <clears throat> a wife's a mistake. Every man has to make now and again, and nobody has ever figured it out why. Do Itsy Bitsy Spider, Daddy. Itsy Bitsy Spider. Oh, oh, Frank, come on, come on, come on. Where are we? Itsy Bitsy He's Spider. Come up, up the water spout. Down came, came the rain and washed the spider out. Out comes the sun and took the rain away. And Itsy Bitsy Spider. Pleasure, Lynn. We have a cold one. Six pack to go. How's the business, Doc? Well, I could complain. What's the point? We'll get you nowhere. Okay. And what you got there, honey? Here's for mine. Oh, do you want these orders uh, separate? Yeah, he's got his own money. No, I don't. What happened to the quarter Dad gave you? I don't know. I lost it. Just take out for mine. No, Cindy, I want my bubble gum. I want it. You want it, you pay for it. I don't have my money. And you don't have your candy. Let's go. Hey, um, he's got that candy there. yelling about. I guess it was about a little bit of candy. Is it all settled? I guess. I want my money back. What money? Is there something the matter, miss? Yeah, there's something the matter. Whoever it was in here waited on my little brother, accused him of trying to raid the store, and I want my money back. I never accused him of nothing. He just had some articles that hadn't been paid for is all, and I was just asking if they was going to be paid for. You calling my sister a liar? I never called anybody a liar. I I'm just saying the way it was. There's some kind of problem here? Nobody accuses my little brother of stealing. What are you talking about, miss? Don't get snotty with me. If anybody's being snotty around here, I wouldn't say it was me. Here's your money back. 
It's the last of it you'll ever see from our family again. That's your privilege. Suits me fine. accuse a little child of stealing. I never accused that little boy of a darn thing. Uh, nobody's saying you did, Madge. Calm down, Madge. Just calm down. All right, now. I want to know which one of you two rotten bitches accused my kids of coming in to this rotten store and trying to raid it. I'll take one of the both of you out on the damn street and whip your rotten asses off. Now, which one of you called my kid a thief? Nobody called your child a thief. Well, who's the boss around here? I'm the boss around right here. I'd be happy to explain to you what happened if you'll just quiet down. Don't you tell me to quiet down. I didn't come in here to quiet down. I'll come in here to find out who had the damn almighty gall to call my little boy a thief. Wait outside. Let me have a pack of butts. I guess not, Mr. Rowan. Sir, it's my understanding that nobody in your family wishes to do any further business in this establishment. Is that a fact? That's my understanding. So be it. Good Lord. All that fuss over a little bit of candy. Good night, Madge. Good night. See you tomorrow. Ooh. Still the boss in the store? What? I said, is she still the boss in the store? What? <laughs> yeah, I guess she is. She the boss in the street, too? Mr. Rowan, there is no boss on the streets, as far as I know. I'll tell you what. I'll give you $100, cash money. You'll try to whip my old lady right here in the street. You don't have to whip her. You just have to try. Though I doubt you could whip it, Dina. Mr. Rose, I don't know whether you're drunk or 
altogether out of your mind or just plain ridiculous. <laughs> What are you hollering about? Sheriff Lewis, we got a report of harassment at 1706 Oak Street. People named us Westerman. They called the highway patrol. A patrol thought we might want to have a look too. How long ago did they leave? Oh, they took off about uh, 10 minutes before you boys got here. I don't know how long they're there for that. Well, he probably heard my call. He's got police scanners on all his vehicles. You know this fella? Yeah, me and Rowan go back a long ways. I guess you folks know he's been a wagon load of serious trouble around here for a lot of years. Well, uh, what we want to know is... what can be done about this situation, Sheriff? Well, the street's public property, Ms. Westman. As long as he don't set foot on yours, he's in the clear and he knows it. Next to lawyers, criminals know the most about the law. Even if he was out there yet, couldn't do anything more than aggravate him a bit. So what you're saying is not a damn thing you can do about it. That's what you're saying? Well, I guess it just goes to show it don't pay to refuse Lynn Rowan to pack cigarettes. <laughs> Maybe Ruth should have talked to Hank Davis first. Is he? Bill Rowan plugged in the head a few years back. Before your time, Mayor. He shot somebody? Both barrels. He killed him? No. Wasn't for not trying, though. No. The living proof. Hank, come on over here. We just uh, tell the boys here about your uh, run in with Lynn Rowan. Uh huh. Why'd he shoot you? Never did know. Just got it into his head I'd wronged him somehow, which I never did. But he can do that. Gets notions. I had two eyewitnesses besides myself. First one backed off before it ever come to trial. Because he'd already got the word indirectly from Lynn that if he testified and Lynn got convicted, he was a dead man. That was the end of Cliff testifying. And the other one? Shoot. Lynn's lawyer made mincemeat of him. One, two, three. Lynn walked away from it. He always has. Never did know why he shot me. Gets notions, Lynn does. Marshal, he's out there again. Doing, Lynn? What's happening? 
I don't know, Marshal, you tell me what's happening. <laughs> well, I just happened to be passing by, and I seen you parked here, and I just wondered, you know, how come? Overheated. Just waiting for it to cool down. Seems like it's chilled down. Why don't you give her a try? I do appreciate your concern, though, Marshal. Well, you know, just doing my duty. Had a boy. We gotta assume it's against the law for someone to shoot a shotgun in the middle of the community, don't we? Well, now, if he points a gun at a person, uh, well, I guess you would be, but uh, I'm not real sure about shooting a shotgun in midair, man. We'll have to just check the local ordinance on that. Now, in the meantime, if you'll just keep your eyes open and don't hesitate to report any suspicious activity. Well, suspicious activity? Like what, for instance? Like Len Rowan coming into our house some night, shooting us both in our beds. I'll tell you what I'm beginning to think, Madge. I'm beginning to think the law isn't worth a damn for us. Yeah. Yeah, that Westerman woman's a real mouthy lady. I'd say she's got one of the biggest mouths in six counties on her. Whoa! <laughs> I'll tell you, her biggest trouble, though, is... Her biggest trouble is I won't take her out. <laughs> Yeah, yes, he wants to get personal with me, and I flat won't do it. I'd say that puts her on a damn short list, don't it, Lynn? You wouldn't be a lion. You! The old man, Westerman. Now, there's a different story. <laughs> there's a man needs a lesson, talk to him. But what kind of man... What kind of man lets a woman boss his outfit? Mm. Yeah. Old man or no. There's a fella needs a lesson taught to him. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> There's a fella needs a lesson taught to him.
How's it going? You been calling the law of late, Wes? That's what they call you, ain't it? Wes? Oh, I ain't been calling the law. You want to fight me, Wes? Look here, Rowan. This here's private property along here, you know. I want you off it. some more beer. Sure thing, Lou. Now. Hey, Wes. Who shot you? If the law had done its job in the first place, it's when it happened. Who shot you? Seven regarding armed assault in Darby, advising as little radio traffic as possible. Subject will be picking up all transmissions. Won't you, Lynn? What you're going to do is head right for the state line, ain't you, Lynn? You'll be going through Copeland. Let's see who gets there first.
is on us. I've spotted the road east on Route R and following. That's advice I don't need. All right, he's turning off. It's a uh, gravel road left on Rudar. Approximately one half mile south of Copeland. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like he's taking me into the boondocks. Look, if, uh... I let it play it out his way, you'll never find us. I'm gonna have to take him now. Y'all hurry right along, why don't you? Step out of the truck. Then you, Wilson. What happened? I run a stoplight or something? Then rolling you under arrest on suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon. Who got shot? Just moved to the back of the truck. Both hands on the tailgate, feet spread. In the truck! Slide over under the wheel and get out the left side. Show me a hand! Do as he says. Who was it got shot? Move to the back of the truck. Hands on the tailgate, feet spread. Let's all just settle down now. tonight. It was a good feeling. I've been wanting to nail him for a real long time. I'm happy for you, Ben. this time. The good news is Wes will be walking out of the hospital in a week to ten days. The bad news is he'll be living on mashed potatoes and tapioca pudding for the next couple of months. <laughs> and not too much talking in the meanwhile. He'll be talking strong and clear enough in time to stand up in the court of law and say who did it. That's the best news. Well, I'm inclined to accept Mr. Teague's argument, Mr. Knowles. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Teague, I am releasing your client on a bond of $30,000. Preliminary hearing is set for February 18th. Well, I hope you get luckier with him than your predecessors did. Mm -hmm. yeah, this fellow's been uh, hard to nail, I understand. Well, uh, hard don't tell him. Not long back, he was in here on something like 19 felony counts. I mean, maybe you want to dig out the records. It couldn't hurt. Give me the highlights. 
Most of the serious stuff was to do with his wife, Adina. That's before she was his wife. And she was maybe 15 at the time. But her and another woman were living with wait Rowan. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Two, two of them? Yeah, the two of them. And the other one's two kids by Rowan. And he was married to someone else at the time and had maybe four kids with that one. I mean, it's hard to keep track of the offspring. That Rowan keeps a lot of ladies busy. Anyhow, it turned out Adina was taking some real rough treatment from him. And after enough of that, or I guess too much, she blew the whistle. She told about at least one time when he'd force his attentions on her in various unsavory ways, and that gave us the rape charge. Now, her being underage, we got the child molestation out of that. Eight counts. And about two weeks from trial, Virgil Teague comes up with the big announcement. Rowan has divorced his wife and married Dina. That's into witness, into case. Yeah, yeah. Well, marrying Adina, that does sound like a Teague idea. He's slick as butter, Virgil. Well, what about the arson? That was her folks, Adina's. They'd helped her out when she was trying to cut loose a Rowan. He didn't much care for that. He burned their house down. Now, Adina was our witness there, too. She watched him do it. And people's dog made a fuss, so uh, he shot it. Shot the dog? Shot the dog. Hey, how you doing, boys? Get out of trouble? Yeah, you bet, Lynn. Yeah, we'll be seeing you, Lynn. That's right, boys. You will be seeing me. How you doing, Hank? Lynn? Oh, give me a beer, Billy. What'll the uh, lady have? Oh, she ain't drinking, she's driving. A root beer. Oh, what was all the commotion yesterday? I heard uh, somebody tried to raid the grocery store. Is that a fact, Todd? Must have been after some candy and cigarettes. You should have seen that knife, Billy. What knife was that? The knife that old boy come at me with him. It must have been about a foot long. <laughs> Oh, he's getting on in years, that West, but he's a tough old bird, ain't he? Yeah. Now, he was intending me serious bodily harm, as far as I can see. Now, it was him or me. Yes, sir, it was him or me. Now, you wait and see, Billy. Now, the truth of it will all come out. That's the American way. What the hell's going on? What's he doing on the loose? It's the American way. So far, what we did, me and Madge, we got ourselves one of those walkie-talkie things. We're going to take turns staying up through the nights and keeping watch. During the days, one of us is going to try to stay with him at all times. Though I doubt he's going to stand for that too long. Have you and Wes got yourselves any kind of protection, Ruth? Yes. But I sure don't like it. Don't feel bad about it. I'm a peace-loving man, but I believe in God, guts, and guns, and our right to our faith in all three. Yeah.
Keep sticking your nose in. You're going to be having a visit one of these nights, and we'll we'll trust you up. We'll let you look on. Some of the boys give your wife a good time. I expect she could use a bit of a change. You come ahead. Come ahead and try it. I'm waiting for you. You got a real nice looking wife for an ugly little slob. Okay, don't fuss. Don't fuss. Shh, shh, shh. He's all talk. Used to be he'd come to town maybe once a week or so. Now it's every day. He's scaring a lot of other people in this town besides the Westermans. Generally been his way, Mayor. He can sit there till Christmas knowing we can't do a damn thing about it. Except he ain't got that long. Preliminary hearing's coming up next week. Hang loose, boys. I'm denying your motion to dismiss, Mr. Teague. I find reasonable cause to believe that a felony assault in the first degree has been committed. I'm binding your client over for trial. Next court date, March 5th. Bond will be continued. Uh, in view of the circumstances, Your Honor, may we have an order that Mr. Rowan have no further contact with Mr. or Mrs. Westerman? So ordered. Now, Mr. Teague, do I have your assurance that there will be no further intimidation of the complainants on the part of your client? You have, Your Honor. I won't say I wasn't nervous. That fella can stare holes right through you. Better them kind than these. You did real good, Wes. They got him now. Two weeks from today, we're going to walk right back into that courtroom. Len's going to swear under oath that it's impossible for him to get a fair trial in Fuller, McCade, Beecham, Lawson, Winnebago, or Roper counties because the citizens of these counties are biased and prejudiced against him. Well, that's a hell of a lot of prejudice, ain't it? <laughs> well, when will it be? In the trial. Honey, the wheels of justice grind exceeding slow. <laughs> especially, especially when Virgil Teague is cranking him. Huh? Well, but what if he gets convicted? I mean, how long will he get in jail? What I tell you about that jail, Doc? Huh? What did I tell you? I'll remind you when we get home. You going to go to jail, Dad? You're so stupid, Claude. I can't put somebody in jail for defending himself against somebody who's trying to kill him. Don't you worry, boy. People been out to get me all of my life. And beats me why. But I never spent a solitary day inside jail. The time will never come I do. One way or the other. Listen up. No hanging around after school. I want you right home. Okay. Bye. 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 
Hello? If your husband testifies at the trial, you could lose several members of your family. Jack, that was the fourth time. Now, there's got to be something that can be done about it. Well, there isn't. Why not, damn it? Because it's just a voice on the telephone. And no way to prove it's him. He's just bluffing, hon. We're just gonna have to wait it out. Oh, hey, hey, Marshal! Got a minute? Well, ain't you looking all official? I once in a while don't hurt. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't want folks to think I wasn't earning my pay. Had a boy. I never want to ask you, Paul. Well, ask away. <laughs> I guess you know whether we got uh, something of a trial coming up in the near future about this this so-called shootout. Yeah, well, sure, Lynn, I know about that. Which is it's going to be a total farce. <laughs> Well, there's some trials are, I guess. What I've been meaning to ask you, Paul, I was wondering, uh... Well, I was just wondering if it was your intent to testify against me at this here farce of a trial. I've been called to do my lawful duty, Lynn. I'm just gonna have to do it. Hey, now. What's going on here, Lynn? I guess you know what it'd be necessary to do to anybody, anybody, at hand at putting me in jail. Look here, Lynn. There's never been any trouble between me and you. Let's not be starting any. Oh, we ain't talking starting trouble. We're talking finishing it. Ain't we, honey? Oh, good Lord, now, what the hell? <laughs> well, I know how you feel, Paul. Uh, there's something that makes me damn nervous is seeing a, a weapon in the hands of a female. Tell her to put that thing away, Lynn. You two yours. Let's all calm down, huh? Let's go get us a beer, Marshal. I ain't drinking today. I'm just gonna be about my business now. Y'all just calm down. Okay, Lynn? Y'all just calm down now. Have a nice day, Marshal! Here, Mayor. What the hell's this, Paul? This is me resigning. Oh, don't you think you're overreacting just a bit? Overreacting? Didn't you hear what I said, Dan? I believe they'd as soon blow me away as not. I ain't a professional lawman. Six months ago, I was working on the damn pipeline. Now you're expecting me to go up against Rowan alone when the real cops won't do diddly. You're the only law we got in Derby, Paul. You got none now. my calendar wrong. Where the hell is everybody? Someplace else, Sheriff. What's going on? <laughs> Lynn Rowan's going on. Ain't you heard? It's getting so folks don't want to be where he's likely to be. Be in town now? Not yet. He'll be alone. Stores is closing early now, generally. Ain't no business. Fellas picking up their wives, working in town. Don't want them going home alone at night. And we closed 7 o'clock last night. Hmm? You don't maybe think you're getting a bit carried away here. 
But what the problem here is the law not getting carried away enough, Sheriff. We're doing everything we can according to the law. The law is the law. Yeah, we keep hearing that a lot, don't we, Todd? Hmm. Patience is a virtue, boys. It's only a week till that trial. Here you lost your marshal. Yeah, nobody's blaming him. You know, the most a marshal ever had to do in this town, maybe shoot a rabid dog, chastise a rowdy drunk now and again. Nobody said nothing about a crazy man with a shotgun. Well, don't you worry about it, Sheriff. I'll just bet it's legal, somehow. Yep. Real bad for business, Lynn Rowan. got a cute house. Be a shame to see it burning down some night, huh? Frank, you got a minute. So what's up, Wilson? You busting me? What the hell for? Get in there. You're still pretty tight with Lynn Rowan, ain't you, Frank? Lynn? Yeah, sure. We hang out now and again. Why? I want you to give him a message for me. I want you to tell him that if he phones my home one more time, or if he comes within sight and distance of my home one more time, He's going to find himself staring down the barrel of a 357 some dark night on a lonesome road. And it'll be the last one he ever stares down. Can you remember that, Frank? Yeah, I can remember that. Uh, the gist will do. Thing. Got something to show you. Came this morning. Continued till August 5th, 1981. What's that mean, continued? It means the trial is supposed to be next Tuesday. Won't be for another three months, what it means. Why? How can they do that? Well, they can make the law stand on its head and whistle the Star Spangled Banner. Somebody smart enough wants it to. It's gonna be a long summer.
better than that, I can't even. Some say the town of bad news. Tried to shut him down. Last year's party got the judge real. Looks like you got yourself a new set of wheels, Lenny. Looks hot. Birthday present. No kidding in front. Me? <laughs> huh? Still looks hot. Yeah, four-wheel drive. Four-barrel engine. Sliding rear window, air conditioning, tilt, cruise control, dual tanks. You name it. I'd had to set you back a bit. 11,000 cash on the hood. Business must be good, Len. Yeah. Meaning what? Meaning nothing, Len. Hell, I didn't mean nothing, you know. Yeah! All my women are dying to drive. A couple of them waiting outside right now, hoping maybe I'll, I'll let one of them drive that baby home. Yeah, that's, that's the way to go with women. Hmm. Keep waiting. Keep hoping. That's the way they like it. <laughs> the question is, what will I give old Wes for his birthday? What do you mean? Why, well, he's got something coming from me, ain't he? Old Wes. I doubt Wes would be looking for anything from you by way of a birthday present, Lynn. Copperhead, maybe. Huh? <laughs> What's that? Copperhead or two. I could drop in his car some night. They'd be there waiting for him in the morning when he climbs in. <laughs> He'd get rid of the only real witness against me real good, wouldn't it? Uh, good and final. Anybody know where I can get myself a couple of full-grown copperheads? Pay $50 a piece. Lacking a couple of copperheads. I guess I'll have to shoot the son of a bitch again. I'll do it right next time. Well, we've got to sell another continuous. <laughs> Thought you run out of ground. I made some more. I hired yourself a new lawyer. Instead of you? No, besides me. His name's Stanley Fowler. He's a state senator. Stanley is going to invoke a law called the Legislative Continuous Statute, which provides that in any case, criminal or civil, pending in the state courts, a continuous will be granted if the attorneys of either party are a member of the General Assembly. Stanley's going to file an affidavit, and the judge will be required to grant a continuance until at least 10 days after the assembly adjourns. <laughs> the judge is going to know what's going on because he's not stupid. But the law being the law, there's not a damn thing he can do about it. What would you do if I had to go to jail? You said you wouldn't go into jail. <laughs> if everything I said come true, I'd have a 5,000-acre ranch, three Rolls-Royce cars. What would you do? I don't want to talk about it. They wouldn't let you stay here, you know. These fine church-going farmers. Not without me around. You'd have to take the kids, get the hell out of Darby. Lynn? Hmm? How come you keep going into town when you know it's only going to bring you more trouble? Nobody tells me where I can go. Where I can, or what I can do when I get there. If I was to go to jail, he'd probably have yourself a new man 24 hours after they slammed that gate. That's the way women are. Don't you 
Don't you worry, though. You ain't never gonna have to look me in the eye with nothing like that. Day's never gonna come when anybody puts bars between me and my life. The way I wanna live it. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor, we have. Will the clerk bring the verdict to the court, please? <laughs> you may return the verdict to the foreman. The foreman may read the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Lynn Roy Rowan, guilty of assault in the second degree. We're rid of him for two years, praise God. I have to admit, I was beginning to think it never happened. <laughs> Well, it took him long enough, didn't it? Yeah. He's not in jail yet. Might have been worse, Lynn. Second degree, five years. Now, if they'd have gone for first degree, it'd have been life. In the meantime, with the peculiarities of the law of this great state of Missouri being what they are, you're free to go about your business pending the appeal. The appeal isn't worth a pig's guts, and you know it. We lost. You've been inside, Frank. What's it like? There's good time and there's hard. It depends on the individual. Keep your nose clean, keep your bunk tidy. You'll be out in eight months. It'll be eight years to me. What the hell do you do with yourself all day? You wait for it to be over, mostly. I'll tell you the way I figured. I figure if I go to prison, I'm a dead man. And if I don't, I'm a dead man. I guess I'd rather be dead free than dead caged up. You ain't gonna be dead either way. What the hell are you talking about? I'll tell you what, though. I'll maybe just take a few of them with me. Well, listen there, Bob. Uh, you're an old army man, ain't you? World War II? That's right. You and, uh, Europe or the Pacific? Pacific. Did you ever see that movie, uh, Sands of Iwo Jima? It's one of my favorite movies. Did you ever see that one? I believe I have. The Duke is dead. Long live the Duke. You know what I'm saying, Bob? I don't believe I do. Well, John Wayne, the Duke. That's what they called it. Sands of Iwo Jima. Hey, here we go. Got something here I want you to take a look at, Bob. You ought to appreciate this sucker. Old World War II veteran like yourself. Ain't it, honey? You know what I'm gonna do with it? Go. What 
way I understand it, Rowan, you ain't even supposed to be touching a weapon, much less doing anything with one. And what I'm gonna do with it is take out old Wes. Now, he's an old WW2 man, too, ain't he? All you old boys getting together over there at the Veterans Hall, reminiscing about them good old war days. Yep. This is the honey I'm going to do that west with. Whether I'll rip him first, and then shoot him, or shoot him and rip him after. Either way, I'm going to lay that old bastard open from crotch to crown. Like hell, you will. You know somebody who's gonna stop me. Hey, Bob. You know somebody who's gonna stop me? Where the hell's he going? Oh, hell, Dex. I think it's coming apart here. Dad! Dad, put it up, Dad! Don't be foolish. That trash comes over this way carrying that piece. I'm gonna blow his crazy head off. Dad, this is damn Get fun. the hell out of the way! He didn't fire it. He'd be laying dead in the street now if he did. What the hell makes a difference whether he fired it or not? He's not supposed to touch a weapon. That's the ruling of the court. You can nail him for just having it. And if you don't, there'll maybe be somebody else who will. We're just about as close to fed up with this situation as we aim to tolerate. All right, listen, I'll need affidavits from any witnesses, Sheriff. Now, can you get me those? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, but make sure they understand that when I file this motion, Teague's gonna know about it, and so will Rowan. You understand me, Sheriff? They have affidavits, Lynn. Damn it to hell, can't you keep the lid on it for, for ten minutes? <sighs> What'll they do? Well, Noel's filing the motion to have your bond revoked. You could be behind bars pending the appeal. Do you know how long that could be? Who signed the affidavits?
You signed that affidavit against me, Bob. I did. Your boys, too. That's correct. Now, why did you do that, Bob? I believe in the law. Always have done. Oh, it's getting a little harder to do here of late. Now we all got to go through the aggravation of showing up in court all the way over there in Bethune. Friday. I got the notice this morning. And yeah, this is only Monday. Could be a long week. And even assuming we was all still fit for it by Friday, it's a long drive to Bethune, ain't it? I'd say that house would make a hell of a fire if it ever went up some night. Wouldn't you, hon? Now, you can bet your butts that me and the boys are going to be looking out of the back of our heads the rest of the week. But assuming that we make it to Friday, there's a lot of open road in that 80-mile stretch between here and Bethune where Rowan could be laying for us. Now, what I got in mind is a lot of company. How so, Bob? It's time that we all stop grumbling over the back fence and muttered in our beer down at the star and got together on this. Now, there's enough people in this town, or near to, to make a caravan a mile long all the way over to Bethune. And enough people, once we get there, to fill that courtroom to the rafters. Enough to get the message across to the judge and the cops and Rowan and anybody else that this has got to where it's about a hell of a lot more than just Lynn Rowan shooting Wes Westerman and something better be done about it quick. Come on, Pete. Let's go right on over here. Hold up. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Hey, 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 whoa. When do we start? We don't. The hearing's been postponed for 10 days. You kidding me? Go over to the Veterans Hall. We're having a meeting, Hank. Whatever the law's gonna do, how are we gonna protect Bob Webb and his boys for another 10 days? Yeah. The law ain't gonna do nothing. I say we hog tie rolling. Lock him in a barn until January 19th. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What happens next time? You think that lawyer here won't weasel him out of it again? I say we end it right now, today. Blow Rowan away and mark it pay. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no guns. Now listen to me now. Okay, the, the law has done a twist on us again. But he has been tried and convicted. And he's going to jail, sooner or later. That crazy man ain't never going to jail. It's been a full year ago he shot Wes, and he's still waking up in his own bed. Yeah. Hey. What the hell's going on? You having a convention? It's a big meeting, Lynn. I ain't seen so many people in town since Reagan got elected, except they ain't in such a good mood this time. I wouldn't say that's anything to laugh about, Lynn. If I was you, I'd stay out of town today. If I was you, I'd stay out of the county today. I want to go with you. Stay here and watch the kids. Lynn, this just ain't a good idea. Yeah. 
Make yourselves up some kind of a schedule so that one or two men are keeping an eye on him at all times so that his whereabouts are known. The minute he creates any kind of disturbance, you call the law. Oh, I'll be too late. That should be coming all. What if he pulls down on one of us some night in the dark out in the boondocks? Yeah. If a man draws a gun on you and points it at you, you have the total right to defend yourself. Looking kind of lonesome, Billy. If we're gonna be doggy, no one, how about you deputize a bunch of us, Sheriff? What we need is a legal posse. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. But I'll have to get permission from the county commissioners first. I'll give it a try. I should have an answer for you by this afternoon. Rollins in town. Well, if we're going to start keeping an eye on him, we might as well start now. Yeah! Place else looks like. Why don't you get out of town and stay out? And don't come back. Let's see to it. Thank you. 
Man, let's get the hell out of here, okay? Okay? You standing just about right here and you didn't see nothing? When the shooting started, I went for cover. Well, up the looks of it, whoever it was couldn't have been much further up and right down the street there. I was standing up there by, by the post office. Looks like you'd have a pretty clear view of the whole street. No. The only thing I had a clear view of was the truck I was diving under. If you guys had thrown that SOB in jail, he wouldn't be dead now. Jack, you heard? Hard to believe, huh? You get the shooter? Not yet. From the looks of the truck, there was at least two of them. You know, I said, damn man, I got two nails. They had him. He was as good as in jail. All they had to do was wait. Well, they've been waiting quite some time, Phil. But it's the law. Oh, this ain't the law. This can't be the law. Phil, you got anything? Well, I think we might have a bit of a problem here, Phil. Oh, I know we got a problem. We got a dead body, and that's a problem. No, what I mean is, we might have a whole town here come down blind all of a sudden. It was Todd Lacey. You actually seen him? She said she did, didn't she? I, I turned around, and I looked right at him. He was standing right there along the street. He just lifted up his gun. He just... I started shooting. <laughs> Did you see anybody else? No, no, just him. Just, it was Todd Lacey. Well, maybe she needs glasses, but it sure wasn't me she seen. You know, to tell you the truth, I wished I could say I was the one that done the deed. Anybody ever had it coming, it was Lynn Rowan. He stole our livestock. 
He shot our horses, he raped our women, you name it. But I gotta tell you the truth here. It wasn't me. Well, yeah. When I left the bar, I was right behind Rowan. I was 12 or 15 feet from the truck when the shooting started. I dropped to the sidewalk. You didn't see anybody with a weapon? I hit the sidewalk, sir. Let me put it to you this way. I didn't see nothing. And if I had, I wouldn't tell you. The Bible says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. Mr. Rowan lived by the gun, and that's the way he died. And, uh, well, they just stood there, you know, staring. I thought they was waiting for something. It was a set-up thing. There ain't a doubt in my mind. And they've been having meetings about killing him. And everybody knows it. All my life, they blamed him for everything. But he was the best father anybody can have. I worship the ground he walked on. I just don't understand how anybody could just shoot him down in cold blood. He was a good-hearted person. He was good to his kids. He was good to me. I just hope they remember. He never kneeled down to them. They'll never forget him, because there'll never be none like him. <laughs> there was nothing but love between him and I. He was the best. It is one thing for an individual to strike out in anger or fear and quite another for a group of townspeople to conspire to kill someone because they perceive the criminal justice system as ineffective in dealing with it. Vigilante action is tragic in its brutal violence. It also indicates a breakdown in the system itself. Unfortunately, what is dispensed by such white sheet, night rider mentality never is justice. Vigilantes who see themselves as judge, jury, and executioner have no place in a society governed by laws. What'll it be for you? The county grand jury failed to return an indictment in the shooting. A federal grand jury also failed to issue any indictments. 
No one has ever been prosecuted for this murder. Ooh, ooh. 